and hi gang, my radar meteorologist Matt Pucci with another installment of Whiteboard Weather. Today we're talking lake effect snow. It's peak lake effect snow season, and while we haven't had many big events yet, there's still plenty of time. So I roughly tried drawing parts of the central U.S. near the Great Lakes. I'm not an artist, so full disclosure there, but this is basically kind of the area that is most prone to lake effect snows, some of which could be prodigious at times. So the real setup for lake effect snow involves a cold wind blowing down a warm lake. Remember, in the fall, we haven't had temperatures cold enough to really cool down the Great Lakes, especially the more shallow ones, which is why you can have a big time contrast between the lake temperatures and the air temperatures above. Now, you really want as much of a fetch along these lakes as possible, which means winds out of the west-southwest, kind of going like this, but they have to be a cold wind. So again, here's Lake Erie, here's Lake Ontario. Here again, we have the winds out of the west-southwest. To get this, you want high pressure, off to the south southeast because high spin clockwise so like this and you want to low a source of storminess instability cold air banked up to the northwest or i'd say southern canada quebec montreal area so a low up here so in between again low spin counterclockwise so the air would flow more like this right in between you get the perfect fetch of winds riding along the entire length of lake erie and again lake ontario too looking just like this so that's the wind direction, but you need a lot more than just wind. So there are a couple of key areas most prone to big time lake effect snows, copious in fact, enough that back during 2014, this rose to national prominence when areas just south of Buffalo got more than five feet of snow in just a couple days time. So again, it's always in the lee of the lakes when you have these perfect winds that maximize the fetch. So again, near and just south of Buffalo, and right along the Tug Hill Plateau between roughly Oswego and Watertown, New York. These areas most prone to those big, hefty snow totals. And keep in mind, given the localized nature of this effect, you can get things to range in a matter of, say, five, 10 miles. We're talking major plastering of entire communities, digging out for days, and hardly an inch of snowfall. That's how quickly these conditions can vary and why really understanding lake effect snows, especially if you live in these areas, is key. So good news, I found a stick, perfect for pointing. So here's just kind of an example of showing you what we're talking about. This lake might be, say for example, 200 miles long, but the band of lake effect snow is fine enough. It might only be say five to 10 miles wide. So all this moisture going up in the atmosphere is falling in such a narrow area. And that's why you can get an absolute dumping of feet worth of snow. It's really an incredible event. So let's break it down a little bit more and show you exactly what it looks like when you get into a lake effect band. Let's give you some idea for the scale as to what makes this such a crazy cool event. This lake might be, let's say 200 miles long, but the actual band of lake effect snow might only be about five, 10 miles wide. So picture all this moisture, all this incredible buoyancy to support updrafts that produce extreme snowfall rates, five, 10 inches an hour, all falling in such a tiny little area. And this may penetrate only about 15 miles away from the lake and be like I said, five, 10 miles wide. So the footprint for lake effect snows is super small, but all that snow is compressed in a very small area and that's what gives the event its potency. So let's talk the perfect recipe for big time lake effect snow. Here's a lake, it's lengthwise. So we want winds parallel to the length of the lake. Now here's the thing, at this time of year, it's still fall. The water temperatures haven't dropped all that much. So we're talking about 45 to 52 degrees, but all the cool air spilling down from Canada can move down very quickly. We have air temperatures, let's say, 10 to 25 degrees for the best lake effect snow events. So that's a difference of 20 to 30 plus degrees over only say, I don't know, let's say this much. And so that allows all the warm air in contact with the lake, because remember the lake heats the air above it and adds moisture to it to rise rapidly. And so very quickly after that air, the cold air moves over the lake, you get these hulking clouds to develop and eventually a few become basically thunderstorms. They reach so high that they actually reach the tropopause. So this layer here is the tropopause. The tropopause, tropopause, is the layer in the atmosphere where air temperatures start to increase with height because this is the stratosphere up here. And so you can very easily have these hulking clouds go all the way up to about 30, sometimes even 35,000 feet in the winter time and that produces these epic lake effect snow. So again, here are the snows. They start to fade away 15 to 20 miles inland, but still big time snows. I'm gonna try to make little plus signs or asterisks because that's kind of what snow looks like. Okay, so good enough. Now here's the thing. The updraft speeds in these things are strong enough to not only support lots of snow, 
but also small hail too periodically and to support something called tribal electrification, basically thunder snow. So in these big time events, you can get snowfall rates between five and nine inches per hour. You can get thunder snow because these things behave just like a real thunderstorm, but with snow because air temperatures are incredibly cold. And if the temps are towards the lower end of that range, say 5, 10, 15 degrees, the snow is even fluffier, which means it stacks up higher. So you get more intense snowfall rates, like nine inches per hour, which has happened before. You actually get lightning striking the ground, which has been an issue before. That's why people don't wanna go out and shovel because if you're in say Buffalo, New York, or just south of there, when thunder snow is occurring, it's dangerous. You go outside with shovels, you don't wanna do that. And so it's an amazing and extremely local event. And you also get water spouts too. These kind of snow squall or lake effect water spouts, which can occur with lake effect rain or snow, but especially lake effect snow. If you get that kind of water steaming because of the contrast between the water temperatures and the air above it, that's the perfect recipe for water spouts. So these things can be incredibly impressive, but only on such a short scale of say, like we said, 10 miles across. So it's one of those things, you might be in a neighboring county, see nothing, you drive down to where the snow is occurring, complete whiteout conditions, they can't dig out for days. It's really one of the most potent snowstorms on earth, but there are a couple other areas on earth that get snow like this. The Sea of Otthotsk near Japan, for example, sees things just like this, they can get 300 to 400 inches of snow in a single season thanks to this effect, sound effect snow or ocean effect snow there. So very similar, but lake effect snow is a biggie. It occurs off the Great Lakes this time of year. And once in a while, you get these bands that dump feet of snow in a very short amount of time. So there are a few other places in the world that see snows like this. The Sea of Otthots, for example, near Japan can see big time snows and parts of Western Japan, three to 500 inches of snow in a single season. But that said, it's an extremely impressive event, and once in a while you get these things that dump big time snow totals, even here in the United States. Of course, my radar, a great place where you can tune into the app, figure out all the explainers you need, and of course, monitor the radar to see just how heavy the snow will be in your neck of the woods. Follow my radar on social media Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox, and Windows.